back y'all how you feeling i'm just a little overwhelmed like unfortunately for a lot of my life i feel like from an early age i feel like i've been surviving carrying our eighth child the eighth time it's a sacrifice we don't sit there and understand god's plan can't understand his whole plan because he ain't gonna give it to you unless you lean on him because if you don't take that time for yourself you can't do nothing for us just wanted to come to you guys and and share what are some of the most challenging things in this pregnancy hey. how you feeling <laughs> i don't know i feel like we haven't done this in a really really long time i know uh, it's only been mm, like a couple of weeks no that's surface how you feeling like Layla's not have to knock on the door. <laughs> I'm back. Let's try this again. Mm -hmm. How you doing? How you feeling? Before we get into that, let's just introduce ourselves. Y'all already know. We're back <laughs> with a... another one. And I am Sam Via. And I'm Antoine. And we are the Henry's in the Hizzy. We're as busy about to get you. I can't even get that through. Uh oh, you cold. almost had it. He almost had it, y'all. Y'all don't know, but in Antoine's past life, he used to be a rapper. Not my past life, right now. <laughs> he used to have a whole mixtapes. Mix I got a couple mixtapes out. I got a mixtape about to drop. Not my past life, right now. <laughs> At 40. At 40. <laughs> you, you sound like a hater. No, I'm just, I'm glad that, you know, laughter, what is it? Laughter is good for the soul. All right, guys, we're back. <laughs> It's been a little minute. So. It's been a little minute since we've been on this bench. So you want to tell everybody how you feeling today? Oh, man. This is week what? Tell everybody what week it is. I don't want to tell. I haven't really told everybody. Someone else mentioned. They was like, why she's not telling us when she's due or something like that. We're almost in trimester three. All right. So that's good. Yeah. So I think with the conversation that's going to be held today. It's good so they could guess and try to say, all right, she might be 12 weeks, right. one week. I just said there's some trimester, so they know I'm not 12 weeks. If they know they trimester, they're going to know that I'm not 12 weeks. Somebody could have been <laughs> thinking, though. they thinking, but I can... I, we're, we, we're just... we in these weeks, this week, and I think you need to elaborate on and it, it disclose how you were really feeling. Right. I think that... I mentioned this in my previous video when you were away. Mm. He's back, y'all. <laughs> um, you were away for 72 hours, a little longer than 72 hours. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that I don't really vocalize how I feel a lot. I think I just kind of mustard and like keep going like you know i don't stop to think about it because i believe once you think about it that's when you allow yourself to like self-pity yourself when you can like just live in those feelings so i don't i'm just saying i don't particularly dwell too much in my feelings on how i feel so, so sometimes when people ask me how are you feeling it is it's almost customary for me to immediately say, I'm good. And it's just like, it's like a reflex. It's almost like if you take that thing and you hit my knee, like my knee is going to jerk, right? So if you ask me immediately, it's like, I'm good. It's like I've been accustomed to saying, I'm good. But when you stop and you really start to think and it's like wait a minute sam how are you feeling mm -hmm. what are you feeling and i don't know i think i think at some point in um term when you say if you're acknowledging your feelings how is that pity um i don't know i just think that sometimes you can allow yourself to dwell in what you're feeling so, i don't know just, so, so I keep you, saying I don't know, but I truly do know. So if you don't acknowledge how you feel, how do you recognize if you what you're feeling, or do you why do you or is it important to keep going, or is it important to just stop and like take the fresh air? 
Yeah. I believe that for me personally, I know what I feel and it's like, I can recognize it within myself. I can look in the mirror and say, you know, right now you're, you're sad right now, Sam, you're tired right now. You're exhausted. I can say that to myself, but to vocalize that to somebody else, I feel like it gives it life. So I typically won't, I won't elaborate on that because mm. I know that it's just a feeling this too shall pass and all of that good stuff. Now I do know that that's part of my defense mechanism, the way that I am orchestrated and developed. I, you know, I have this like strong mentality where, okay, I'll get past it. I'll get past it. But that never negates the fact of how I am truly feeling at that moment. Right. So if you ask me today, how are you feeling? I just need a moment to gather my thoughts and I don't like this. It feels vulnerable, but I feel a little overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel a little overwhelmed. Um, we, you want me to ask me what? It just, it just, it's so much emotions and I don't want to cry because I'm not sad, but it's just, it's a lot of emotions. And I think that I'm just a little overwhelmed, like, and I get that life do that. Like sometimes you have seasons where life feel overwhelmed, but I, I just feel like overwhelmed. This past week was very, it was heavy mm -hmm. this past week, mm -hmm. you know, just dealing with life, dealing with you being away, dealing with pregnancy, dealing with still trying to show up for seven other children while you're growing the eighth child. I believe it's, it's, it's challenging sometimes. I think uh, I hear you and I understand what you're saying. But my question is, is when do you take that time so you could be able to be whatever you need to be for everybody else? Because if you don't take that time for yourself, you can't do nothing for us. Right. Like, you're not, I mean, you could say, all right, I'll do this and do this and I do this and I do that. But the stuff that we need you the most at, it ain't there. Mm -hmm. So how do you, t how do you build yourself up or take that time for yourself so you could be able to be what, to deal with the growing body in yourself, to deal with your marriage, to deal with the kids, to deal with life? I feel like I do take those times though. I mean, I'm taking, I've took, I've taken two baths in the last two days and I was able to sit <laughs> down and, and just sit down. I mean, sometimes you can, mm -hmm. that's a lot. Like mm -hmm. me, sometimes taking time to sit is, that's a lot. It takes a lot of effort to, for me, for Sam Via. So I'm asking because there's some people that don't know, Right. they don't, they don't know how to sit and they don't know what it means to sit. Right. And I believe I'm one of those persons. I believe that truly I am one, a person who, you know, I'm always on the go. And if there's nothing to go, I will find something to do. It, it, maybe I won't leave the house, but it's something inside the house or work-wise that I would do. But I feel like I have taken time. I've taken time mm -hmm. to just sit and get up early and just drink my cup of coffee or a cup of tea by myself without the kids. Mm -hmm. I've taken time at night to just lay without having to be anyone to, you know, to anybody. I feel like I've taken that time. Mm -hmm. But I think that <sighs> people say, I hear people say, like, you must love the feeling of being pregnant. And while that's not necessarily untrue, I believe that every pregnancy comes with its own challenges mm -hmm. and carrying our eighth child for the eighth time, you know, I just feel as though like, wow, this is, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. So I think that it's kind of unso it's selfish to believe like, you know, that, oh, someone just has perfect pregnancy. I don't think no pregnancy is perfect. It hasn't been for me. I've always experienced something, mm -hmm. but I've always chalked it up to say that God is good and this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. But it's just like getting to this part of my pregnancy, it's like, 
I don't know what's going on, but it feels like, wow, Lord, this is a little bit hard. Mm -hmm. If not hard, if hard is not the word for it, it just feels like this is just challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can deal with the normal like sciatica when you're walking. That's difficult. That's annoying. You get through it. But it's like there's other changing changes that happen. Now it's like difficulty sleeping and turning to one side. It just seems like this is a, this is a sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know, like carrying extra weight around literally is heavy. Mm -hmm. And I just, it just feels like, I don't want to say, God, I can't wait until this is over because that's not how I feel. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like this is a, this is a sacrifice, mm. you know, this is a sacrifice. It's a beautiful sacrifice. God is creating something magnificent, but it just feels like, wow, mm. I don't know. I think that with every other pregnancy that I've had, maybe precise baby number seven, but I felt like, girl, you got to do this. Keep going. Like you, I had no room to digest or even acknowledge what I was feeling at that particular moment. You just kind of, I feel like I was probably in survival mode. And I know that's just like a taboo, like, oh my goodness, she was, and, but I was in survival mode. Mm -hmm. I've been in survival mode, unfortunately, for a lot of my life. I feel like from an early age, I feel like I've been surviving. And it's just like in these latter years, I feel like, okay, now I'm thriving. I no longer need to survive by like the skin of my teeth, but I feel like now I can realize like how much of this is a sacrifice, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Everybody wants to hear it. I, I know I shared it. a lot. I think, um, I think at times, I think we don't, sit there and understand God's plan and we can't understand his whole plan because he ain't gonna give it to you unless you lean on him so a lot of the times that what while we're saying oh whatever the feeling is a lot of the feelings come from us and our relationship with God so you understand what's going on so you understand what God is putting you in through to a certain a certain T but at the same time I think we have to get to a place where our rest is in him and our rest is in his word mm -hmm. our peace and it comes from his word so a lot of times like you can get frantic and scared and this that and third but open up the bible you know um we always have to study we always have to learn we always have to grow um <clears throat> i think your feelings are, are very valid though because um sometimes we get these signs where it seems like all right it's last it's last. It's the last pregnancy, or it's the pregnancy before, or it's or I, this feels no. This feels like something that mm -hmm. happened before, and um, we don't get that chance to say, all right, nah, this is not it. I'm in a different state. I have a different life. I have a different movement. I have a different surrounding. I have different people around me, and we don't because it's normal to be scared. It's easy to be scared. It's easy to say, all right, mm -hmm. God, I'm not good. I'm not ready for this. Right. And like when you said sacrifice, you know, I um agree that it's sacrifice for God. So I think you're doing a good job. And I think that, you know, some of the things that, you know, you're going through, I think that it's, it's some things that maybe it's making you stronger. Mm -hmm. It's making you stronger for the next baby, if it's the next baby or for the next challenge, if it's a next, another challenge, whatever right. it is. So keep going. You know, Take a nap, you know. Right. After this, this after we do this, take a nap. Get mm -hmm. up and we'll do it again. Right. I appreciate that. I just, you know, I feel like I feel like certain times, like when we say, like, just read your Bible or just trust in God. I feel like sometimes it's like, yeah, but how do a person do that when you're literally like your pain is physical? It's mm -hmm. not emotional. It's not mental. It's not spiritual, even mm -hmm. though pain could be spiritual sometimes. This is, I can feel this in my back. So <laughs> you we, know, I can feel let's this. Go, let's go swimming. <laughs> let's go to the whirlpool at the bar. That's true. So, I mean, still, you just, 
you know, there's options out there that's like, you know, you fix your, the reason why you, sometimes when it's physical, you fix your eye on him. Right. And then he'll give you the option of, all right, you could go lay in his bed or you can go downstairs and go to the couch or you could go lay on the floor or you could go to the pool or you could go on a vacation. Right. So, you know, the, this too, this too shall pass. Right. So, I mean, so, yeah. you, I mean, if you, you want to be technical, yeah, you still got to fix your eye on but no matter what the storm may. That's the truth. I thank you. I just, you know, if if you ask me what is the hardest part about this pregnancy with baby number eight, I have to say it's it's like the growing body. I don't know. I know that I was losing weight and I didn't believe I was losing weight after I had Leia. I didn't get back down to my pre-pregnancy weight before I had Layla, but I, I was losing weight. And to be back up there again i don't know i feel like man this is heavy this is heavy weight i think i don't see it as much but when i'm like doing the videos and the editing from previous videos i'm like oh my goodness like now i have a i have a double chin i didn't have that a couple of months ago you know so now i feel as though i can see the weight so now it's like oh you feel the weight now you know so like this pregnancy i feel like there's more weight that i'm carrying mm. um and I'm not sure if that's contributing. Like, I'm always out of breath. You hear me sometimes. Mm. Like, I can walk up the stairs and be like completely. I can walk to the car and be like, oh, I'm completely out of breath. Like, why am I so out of breath? Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I feel like the weight, being out of breath, the pain. And it's like now just the, the comfortability of not being able to sleep. Mm. I think that that's probably the most challenging. I won't say like the worst part of pregnancy, but it's the most challenging right now. What are the worst? I can tell you. I can tell you what's the worst. You want to talk about hemorrhoids? You want to talk about constipation? Well, no, that is that I'm TMI? Not, is that TMI? Every time I see you, you're like that. So I don't. Oh don't my lord! Me, but I don't know about the hemorrhoids and all the, that stuff. I ain't never, no, I never, I didn't see it. So that's disgusting. That's disgusting. But I think that each pregnancy comes with its own challenges, and I believe that this too shall pass. But I thank you for asking me how am I feeling. I think that sometimes we keep going in life and we never stop. I don't stop to to stop and just think like, hey, how you feeling? How you like acknowledge your feelings, own your feelings. It was hard when you was away. It was it the most challenging thing I've ever experienced in life? No, mm. but it was hard. And I, I said that, you know, I haven't been in single mommy mode in a long time. Mm. I haven't, you know, and I think I kind of ruffled some feathers. People kind of was upset because they were like, you're not a single mother. Why would you say that? And it's like, oops, sorry. Um, many people was like, you're not a single mother. Why would you say that's an insult to single mothers? And what I don't understand or what I just wanted to convey is that it's, it wasn't supposed to be an insult. That I was, don't think you got to acknowledge anything to someone what you, what you, what you say. Like, right. that, I think that's a part of stress to me, like, <laughs> like trying to please everybody. Like, I don't, right. I don't, if I said something wrong and I said it, Bro, sorry, but I don't got to explain to you why I said it. Right. But I feel like that these are, I believe that some of some of them are family. Like, I feel like some of y'all are really our family. So sometimes just like for clarification purposes, no, I don't, I don't have to explain anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, but no, not even my bad, because <laughs> I'm not sorry. Well, then, but then, that was my reality. I, I, I mean, people, I think people don't understand Ms. Layla mm. is going in downstairs. But I think that what they don't understand is with the word single, single has nothing to do with marital status. <laughs> are you having a single birth or are you having a double birth? Are you having a single burger or are you having a double or triple burger? That's single. Single is, is used in multiple different categories in life. So it, it wasn't supposed to offend anybody, but that was my reality for a little over 72 hours. I was a single parent of seven. 
I was a single parent and that's no shade to anybody who is wrestling or who is living that lifestyle currently as a single parent. I was a single parent. There's nothing wrong with being a single parent. I was a single parent more than I was ever a married parent. So it wasn't to negate anything. It wasn't to make someone feel less than. It wasn't to clickbait. It was my reality. And I think that and this video is not supposed to be like about this, but I believe that sometimes in life we we don't realize that it doesn't matter where we are in life. Things will happen to you. Mm -hmm. Things will happen to the best of us, the worst of us. And though we're not going to discuss, or maybe we will discuss like why I was a single parent at this time, things happen. Mm -hmm. and, and I pray that people don't think like immediately like infidelity, that stuff is childish. Um, anything can happen in life. We, we, we are two individuals who are one, but we still have individual bodies that we care for, individual parents that we have, things that just come up that may require us to not be completely together 24 mm seven. -hmm. So when, you know, if you've been a single dad, <laughs> Mm -hmm. while I was away, while you sent me on vacation, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you've been a single dad while I take on projects and you've been a single dad. And I don't think that's any shots to those who are a single dad 24 seven. I think people just don't understand the narrative and that's the problem. So it, it, it's hard to convey to somebody or explain somebody why you don't use birth control or why you don't. Right why you don't do this or why you don't do this or what's this and why this happened because people don't understand. So whatever the narrative that somebody wants to paint, whatever picture they want to paint, let them paint it. So I, that's why I'm so, I'm, I think a lot of times, because people say you got a straight face. I got a straight face. It's just, it's just a straight face. I ain't mad at nothing. It's just, that's how I look. Mm -hmm. But if you get to know me, I'm, I'm funny as hell. Mm -hmm. So, Paint your picture, right. <laughs> but right. if you mess around and paint the picture, and the picture would say everything that's reality, right. and you won't even understand because you just you just painted a circle. Right, you painted a picture based on your, your perception. perception. Right. right, right. So right. don't allow you know. Don't, I don't. I just don't allow them have to get to me because right. it doesn't. I like I said to you before, and it's a, to me, I, I, it's a blessing. Either you say a good comment or a bad comment. It still does not matter mm -hmm. because the guys is the over, it's the overall right. And God under God is God's answer. God could say hey and tell you a good thing, but have the thousand things you did wrong. It's His right. answer. So I love that because you're basically saying that we don't look for validation in man. You look for validation in God. Right. And I just know that whatever you do for God, that's what really counts. That's what really matters. So. Um, but I do, I appreciate everyone who saw the, 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 the reverence or the, I can't think of the word right now. Y'all forgive me, but that's pregnancy brain, but I can't think of the word, but I just appreciate those who actually receive what it is that I, I put out. The point of that video was to show like reality because things, happen. anything could happen. My husband could have left to go take care of his mother who's in a different state. He could have went and took care of property that's in a different state. He could have went to look into a business in investment. It could have been so many things that he went and did that caused me to be a single parent for 72 hours. And the reality is there was, it was something to myself because it's like, okay, I, I don't want to do this without you. I don't know if I could do this without you. And me recording was a testament to myself and to God. Like, don't put nobody before God, number one. Number two, you can do anything through Christ Jesus who strengthens mm -hmm. you. And that was my testament. At the end, I watched the video and I thoroughly enjoyed it because it blessed me. I was able to see that like God's strength is made sufficient. And my time of weakness. And when I think that I can't do something, God just blows my mind. Mm. He just works through me. So if you see, if you've seen that video, if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go to that video. 
because God is amazing and, and God can do all things but fail. And I just know like, even when you, when you have the kids all by yourself and you've done it for a week and, you know, more than a weekend. And it's just like, you get through it. It's mm. not like it's chaos. It's not like it's the end of the world. It's we, how you make it. 10, 30. That part. It's how you make it. That part. So I think with, you know, with our cases, either they're going to run you or they're not, you know? So, right. But I'm going to do the running. But I do believe we have really good kids. I do too, but we got busy kids. We got kids that want to party. <laughs> so... Not gonna name no names, okay? All seven of them. If you get it, all seven, they want to party in some type of aspect. They want to party, so it just depends on how you rock it. But we're gonna conclude this because <laughs> right. we're about to go into another topic, right? But um, check us out, man. Right, but I just wanted to come to you guys and and share what are some of the most challenging things in this pregnancy, and I pray that. You guys continue to pray for me, pray with me as we pray, because we didn't even open this video in prayer, mm. but we can end it in prayer and um, just continue to pray as the weeks go by the days and go by. the days go by in Jesus name. And um, let me know in the comments how many weeks, how many weeks am I looking like? Two. <laughs> That's sweet. Dito. But this big old belly. I got twins. <sighs> Triplets. My kids are calling me. I hear I'm calling you. Let's pray it out, baby. Would you like me to lead or would you like to? I got it. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come together, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to get here. Thank you for allowing us to sit on this bench and tell another topic about our lives and allow us to be able to open up to you to you, Lord, first before we even touch someone out there in the world. Please yes. give us strength throughout this evening, strength throughout this day, strength throughout this YouTube platform, strength throughout telling our testimony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Until and next time, peace, guys. See you later.